So then, what's the importance of divine truth in our lives? Well, this is a great question, I feel, and, and the answer is it's of extreme importance in our life. Like, there, there is only one thing more important in our life, and the only reason why this one thing that's more important is more important is because it affects our happiness and our emotions, and that's love. Uh -huh. So the only thing more important than truth is love. But truth even opens the doorway to love. It opens the doorway to understanding how love interacts with things and how love is involved in the universe and how love is involved in creation and how love is involved in every law. So it's truth that lets us understand everything. And as such, it becomes extremely important, not only for our current existence, for happiness in our current existence, but also becomes extremely important for everything that's going to happen to us in our future. Mm. It also is important in every aspect of life that we can think about, right the way through from the time of our conception to who knows what happens that, you know, in, in terms of our future. It also is important in every different type of thing that we can be interested in. So, so there is little point, for example, in studying the medical profession if you don't understand the truth. <laughs> Mm. You know, if, you, if you're told a heap of false things in the medical profession, for example, like 200 years ago, they used to bleed people when they were sick, thinking that would help them and help them get better. Of course it doesn't. We know that now because we've discovered more truth. If you don't know the truth in any single profession, you are in danger of harming not only yourself, but also every single person around you and the universe in which we live. Mm -hmm. so, so knowing the truth is wonderful for helping us understand how everything works and also to reduce the amount of pain and suffering that occurs in our life. Pain and suffering is all the result of people not knowing the truth in the end or not feeling the truth. And so the truth is, divine truth is so essential in those areas as well. And then if you look at the different areas of life, like the medical profession, the political state, state of the earth, the environmental state of the earth, the, the state of each country, what's going on in terms of religion and all these other aspects. Um, it's, uh, the, the pain and suffering that results in all of these areas is a complete result of us not understanding all the truth about it. So how does divine truth prevent us from the danger of being harmed and why does it create such a happy life? Well, divine truth creates this, well, it creates a number of things, obviously. Firstly, it, because we know the truth, we are not going to take actions that are out of harmony with that truth. This means that we're not going to take actions that are out of harmony with love. Remember, we said divine truth is in harmony with love. The beauty of doing that is that we will never feel pain and suffering if we do that. So all of the pain and suffering that occurs on this planet is the direct result of not knowing enough divine truth. That's the truth. That, that is one single truth about this beautiful uh, divine truth or, or God's truth that we know. Is that without... Humankind has tried for centuries to be without God's truth. As a result of that, we've, we've had much pain and suffering. This pain and suffering is the direct result of our inability to understand all of God's truths. If we understood all of God's truths, we would have less pain and suffering. And that applies in every single walk of life. It's a bit like, for example, if we were planning a trip from Earth to the moon and we didn't know the truth of gravity, then we'd be in a lot of trouble. There's mm -hmm. a high likelihood we'd die trying. Mm -hmm. if we didn't understand the laws that involved gravity, even, even the laws that involve the computation of the gravitational acceleration that surrounds the Earth and the gravitational acceleration that surrounds the Moon. If we didn't understand those particular laws and mathematics, then we would have next to no chance of arriving at the Moon in the right possible way that we would actually then be able to return to Earth. So the fact that, that historically, in what was it, 1969 it first occurred, there were, had to be huge numbers of laws, physical laws, that mankind could describe mathematically in order 
for someone to safely go from here to the moon and back again. So that, Now, that's a physical matter. If we look at a medical matter, we can see historically many times physicians did things that were way out of harmony with love, but also way out of harmony with what we now know to be true. And as a result, they had a negative effect rather than a positive effect on the people they were trying to help. That also applies to the political system and the religious system. If we look at the religious system, for example, that we live in currently, we can see that in most religions there is this viewpoint that only people in those religions will be saved. This particular, problem, this particular statement, which is an untruth, causes huge numbers of believers and non-believers to get in conflict with each other all the time. As a result, even wars have occurred historically where millions of people have died as a direct result of this particular belief. Obviously, the belief is false. Right? However, most people of Christian or other religions don't believe it's false. Right? They believe it's true. And as a result of believing something is true that is actually false, they, they now have engaged in action which has caused pain and suffering to other people and themselves. And this is the direct result of every time we're out of harmony with divine truth. Every time we're out of harmony with God's truth, pain and suffering will be the result. The beauty of divine truth is it brings freedom from pain and suffering, not more pain and suffering. So is that why you said that when we know truth, we will act in harmony with it? Is oh, that because we know the truth that acting in disharmony with God's truth will cause pain and suffering? Of course. It will cause us pain and suffering physically, potentially. It can also, and this is something that most people on earth don't understand, is it will cause us pain and suffering emotionally, and it will also cause us pain and suffering spiritually. So it will cause pain and suffering in every, in every aspect of our life if we don't know the truth. Mm -hmm. So when I don't know the truth about love, I will have pain and suffering in my love life. If I don't know truth about religion, I will have pain and suffering or create pain and suffering in my religious life. If I don't know truth about spirituality, I will create pain and suffering spiritual, that, that is spiritual in its nature that will have an emotional impact upon me. If I don't know the truth about the physical universe, whatever I choose to do, I will, I will generally, if I don't act in harmony with what I know to be true or I haven't discovered the truth yet, I will create pain and suffering physically. This is the natural consequence of not understanding all of God's truths. So I feel it is imperative initially to understand some very, very basic truths about our physical existence firstly, and then about our emotional existence next, and then about our spiritual existence. Mm -hmm. And if we do not understand these particular truths, we are going to have pain and suffering. We are going to have emotional trauma, which later on we are going to need to address if we're ever going to be happy. So this is one of the consequences of not knowing divine truth. So, so divine truth, knowing it in your life, is essential for your future everlasting happiness. So why would you avoid its discovery, given the fact that it's so essential for your life? Yeah. yeah. And what about how it relates to our relationship with God? Well, obviously, it relates, God's truth relates to everything, not just to our relationship with God. So, you know, in the beginning, we might not even believe there is a God. Mm -hmm. and, and God's truth will eventually illuminate that particular aspect of itself if we are willing to discover, if we're going, willing to go through a process of experimentation in order to discover whether that is the truth or not. So I'm not saying that we need to guess what the truth is. What we need to do is still go through experiments, but we have the option of firstly going through experiments about whether God exists. Mm -hmm. Once we have determined the truth about that particular subject, then it, it becomes much easier to determine the truth about every other subject because if God doesn't exist, then we have to do our personal experiments. If God does exist, then if there's a way to communicate with that God that does exist, then it would make sense that we communicate with that God who does exist and therefore be able to receive truths of the, about the universe that that God has created. Now, I'm not suggesting that a person has to believe that right up front, mm -hmm. but what I am suggesting is that sooner or later, as we've found from our own experience, they will come to the conclusions, if they take those experiments, they will come to the conclusions that the experiments enforce 
And that is sooner or later they'll come to the conclusion that God does exist. Mm -hmm. And it's much easier to ask God what's going on with God's universe than it is to try and discover the infinite amount of things that are going on in the universe without God. And that's what I'm suggesting. So, so I don't feel that we need to get too hung up on a fact of about, even about belief in God when we're discovering universal truth. We need to understand that there is an absolute truth about everything. Once we understand there is an absolute truth about everything, we can then do experiments in order to discover it. The key is to not limit those experiments in any direction until we have discovered certain truths. Like it's like a scientist, it's like almost like saying to a scientist, look, I want you to find a cure to cancer, but you're not allowed to do any experimentation on any living organism. You're not allowed to do any experimentation, you know, communicate with God because we don't believe in God. And you're not allowed to do any communication with spirits. You might be able to tell you the answer because we don't believe in spirits. And you're not allowed to, um, you know, uh, do any, use any chemical that, you know, might be adverse in its nature towards the human body. And you're not allowed, and we make a whole heap of these rules. It's almost like every rule is like tying somebody's arms behind their back and tying their legs up. And, and then in their set, now, now go ahead and do an experiment, like mm -hmm. as if that's going to work. And this is, this, this is the unfortunate thing of what we do. I feel the only thing that we need to do when it comes to these experiments is ask ourselves what is loving. That needs to be the only limitation that we place on any experimentation. Mm -hmm. And if we place experimentation, limitations of love on the experimentation, we will eventually find the truth very rapidly. If we don't place limitations of love on the experimentation, we will still eventually find the truth but it will be with more pain and suffering. Mm -hmm. Because every time we act out of harmony with love, there is always more pain and suffering. So what I would recommend the people to do is to experiment in harmony with love in order to discover more truth. But understand this truth, God's truth, is so important to the rest of your existence that it needs to be of primary focus in your life. You know, forget, you know, chasing the next thing like the next fastest car and the next new technological advance, these things are very minor in comparison to discovering more and more of God's truth because it is discovering of God's truth that is going to lead you to a happy and universally growing infinite existence if you decide to go down that track. So, so I feel it's, it's so, such an essential part of a person's future life. Mm. So then just to summarise the different things that you've said about the importance of divine truth mm -hmm. in our lives, basically you're saying it's what leads us to have an ever-expanding expa um, curiosity yes. and desire to discover things. So therefore a passion to, for life. Like, you know, if, if we knew everything after a while and we decided not to create anything as a, as a part of that or we couldn't create anything but we knew everything, after a while, we'd start wondering what there is to do unless there were some emotional experiences that are going to be new. Right. And this is what divine truth allows us to do is because God's truth is always expanding and it's infinite in its nature. We are always going to be discovering more and always be more fascinated. And as a result of that, we will have a very interesting life. So we're going to have a happy life and an interesting life mm -hmm. if we understand God, uh, God's truth. And... Um, that it will free us and... From the bondage of uh, not only... What, what I would view as the bondage of slavery. And when I talk about slavery, I'm not talking about slavery in terms of a human being enslaved by another human. I'm talking about slavery to false beliefs. That is our biggest slavery here on the planet. We have a whole... We have constructed a myriads, millions of, in fact, of false beliefs some religious, some scientific, some or, you know, of all kinds of uh, natures. They're beliefs, they're not facts yet. And yet we've turned them into what we believe to be fact. Mm -hmm. And in doing so, we have become enslaved by our own ideas and concepts. If we're progressing towards divine truth, we don't do that. Divine truth creates freedom. It doesn't create slavery to false beliefs and ideas. It doesn't create slavery to the history of mankind. Mm. It, it is forward-looking and not reverse-looking. Mm. It doesn't try to fit everything into the past. It tries to construct a new future. It's exciting. Yeah. yeah. And I suppose the final thing is that 
It's only God's truth that allows us to receive God's love, isn't of it? Of course. So without God's truth or a desire for it, we're never going to be able to receive divine love. If we don't know the truth about God's existence, for example, and cannot and do not know the truth about what experiments we can undertake, then it's going to be very, very hard for us to eventually receive God's love. So, so in the end, our own personal soul's ability to expand beyond its original creation is completely dependent upon understanding divine truth, understanding mm -hmm. God's truth. So it's, it's so essential in every aspect of a person's life. That's why it's been our primary fascination for 2,000 years. We're not interested in much else, actually, as people find out when they start <laughs> talking to us. Although we have a lot of uh, passions and desires and interests in all sorts of things, in the end, our very primary interest, and it's much, much higher than any other interest, is our interest in discovering more truth, more divine truth, more God's truth. Mm.